Um, I've always been interested in technology. I've always been um, interested in whatever the latest is. So of course I had to get my iPad. And then we started doing these classes and I said, well, I'm gonna sign up anyway. Um, and at the time I was doing this, I was only teaching online. Um, so most of what I'm gonna show you is focused on Blackboard, although I'm gonna show you some iPad things because I do use my iPad for just about everything. I'm lucky enough to teach a subject that is not boring. Um, I don't think it's boring and most of my students don't. Um, but there are, just as you all know as teachers, there are things you can do in class that are boring, even in forensic science, it can be boring. Okay. Um, so you would really be surprised at some things. So just a little background, um, this class um, that I'm focusing on is our survey class, which I've been teaching for 12 years now. It's gone through many, many iterations. Um, I've been here for 12 years. I've been teaching it face-to-face. -face. I've been teaching it online for 11 years. Uh, so I'm very well versed in this. It's gone through, I don't know how many textbook changes, curriculum changes, all kinds of things. Um, some of the things that I give students, um, one of their last assignments is a critique of the class as well as asking them what's the most important thing that you've learned in this class. Because again, it is a survey class that touches on an introduction to, you know, one chapter is on fingerprints, one chapter is on crime scene, one chapter is on uh, firearms evidence. So it's a survey touching um, all of those. Um, so a lot of their comments are they wish it was more interactive. Now my students want to be, uh, they want to do autopsies. Okay, they want me to take them to the medical zone. They do. Can we go and, you know, can we do, they want to go on crime scenes. You know, they want to do, and, and as you can imagine, defense attorneys would have a heart attack about some of those things. So I can't do some of those things. Um, but there are ways that I can make the class more interactive. Um, my main outcome, again, was hoping to improve the level of engagement. Um, if they're more engaged, they'll do better. They'll be more interested in the material. Um, to use more Blackboard tools, um, those of you who, again, I've been using Blackboard for 11 years now. Um, I'll also put my uh, plug in here for Quality Matters. I've been a Quality Matters reviewer for, I don't know, maybe seven or eight years now. Uh, and in that, I've gotten to see a lot of other people's Blackboard sites, um, both in this institution and at others. And I highly recommend that you do that, um, not only to help you help your class go through Quality Matters here, but um, it's just you get so many great ideas by looking at other people's things, even when they're in disciplines that aren't even close to yours. What did the reviewers say? Okay. They said make it more visually compelling because links are boring, right? <laughs> like that was a direct quote from Lorna. <laughs> uh, and I, what I'm going to show you is the before and after. Okay. Uh, make sure the videos are 50 compliant because I was already using some videos, but I needed to make sure that they had closed caption on. Um, create more learning objects. I'm still working on that. Um, I'm lucky in forensic science that there's a lot of stuff out there already on the in internet. You have to be careful of that, and I'm really not trying to say anything bad about K-12 through teachers right now, but forensic science has become a favorite um, high school class to teach in some middle schools, and there are some teachers out there teaching it who know nothing about forensic science and they're putting together some of these learning objects and videos and I've watched them and I'm like, oh my God. I tried to use Teacher Kit. Um, I use Skype and Uvu a lot. My students seem to like that. Um, and I'm gonna demonstrate um, Edu Creations, which is a whiteboard app um, on the iPad. Um, I also use Dropbox. Um, I do use social media with my students, although I have a hard time getting some of them to follow me. Participation is slow, so I'm working on that. Um, and again, more images and infographics. This is pretty much what every module of my course looks like. It's all set up that way. Okay. So, uh, uh, I've converted everything to uh, a learning unit. Okay. And so now what you'll see, we have to have learning outcomes there. That's part of uh, Quality Matters. Okay. You have to have those. Uh, but what I'm also going to do, and I'll, I'll show you something that I did in a previous when I recorded um, using screencasting, I did a, a, a walk through a module. Um, I took students through, here's what you'll do in, in each module. What I'm going to do is do a little uh, voice recording for all these and sort of talk to them also about the objectives and how they relate to everything. Um, picture of their textbook for the chapter. Um, I did narrate the PowerPoint, okay? And this took a long time, and I won't, um, I won't play all of this for you, I'll just play just a slight clip of it. 
And I did that with, right within PowerPoint. Categories. Okay. Drugs and chemicals, trace, biological, and pattern evidence. Pattern evidence includes fingerprints, question documents, tool marks, firearms, and shoe and tire marks. It's compliant there and they have that to read. That took a long time. Long time. Long. Long. But it's worth it. Okay, here's an example of a great learning object I found on the web. Um, a video. Which is something I Welcome would... Welcome to How to Compare Fingerprints. This Today is not my voice. Today we're going over the basics. Before we get into comparing... <laughs> but that's the same type of thing I would have created had I not found it, and it's, it was already done. And I was like, this is amazing. You know, this is great. This is their discussion board, and again, I have a YouTube video linked here, which does have closed captioning. It's a very important case in the world of fingerprints about a mistaken identification that was done by the FBI. Um, it's one of the things that we talk about very frequently in class because it really changed the way that the FBI does fingerprint. It's about a nine minute video uh, and it generates quite a bit of discussion about them. It was about the Madrid um, bombing in Spain. Um, this is a timeline. Um, again, this was one of the suggestions that they had. I did just have this linked here, but using the um, snipping tool where you can go in and do a really quick, it's actually right here in your start button. You can go up to here to the snipping tool, um, click on uh, new and just literally drag this and snip whatever you want in the picture and do a screenshot and save that. Uh, and that's exactly what I did for this. So instead of just having a boring link, now they can click on the timeline. Um, it opens it up and um, this is a timeline of forensic science where you can you know, click on all these dates and it tells you what happened, a little bit of history. This is what is called an infographic, okay? I'll show you a whole folder I have with these. Um, if you go um, whatever browser that you like to use, it doesn't matter what it is, um, and just type in infra infographic, one word, and whatever, math, infographic, economics, infographic, forensic science. Um, try to be as specific as you want. There are thousands of them out there that are already on the web, and this is just a way of putting information and some data um, into a chart. Um, a student, and I have them use this in their discussion board, um, you know, how often do forensic experts find usable evidence, and again, you can scroll down I have a, I've saved a folder of about a hundred of these I found in different subjects. Um, they're on everything from terrorism to, I don't know, robbery to um, shoe prints at a crime scene. There's legal ones. There's tons of them. So um, look for them and use them in their class. They're great visuals to use uh, for students. Screencasting things I did in a class last summer. I used, um, I used Jing to do these. Very basic technology. What I did in this class also was a uh, video discussion. Uh, I have a getting to know you discussion board. Just from my laptop sitting at home, um, I did a video introduction and I encouraged them uh, to do the same thing. One thing I did was um, a tour of the syllabus. Okay? And so, um, Another thing I did in this class was to, using Jing also, and this is something I'm going to do for the class, was a walk through a module. Um, and again, I'm getting away from these files because, as Lorna said, they're flash. The only problem with these is students can't see them on their mobile devices. So we want to make sure that they can do that. And most of my modules look the same, so it was sort of a guide for them um, to go through that. So EduCreations is one of the whiteboard apps. There are actually many out there. Um, one of the ways that I found I could use this um, in class was to, uh, out of my photos, I can go to images that I've saved. I can put up an image of a fingerprint on here. Um, and I 
can actually start drawing here if we're talking to students and have them identify um, where the core of the fingerprint is, um, have them identify some characteristics, some ridge islands, some bifurcations, some ridge endings. Um, so this is really helpful in class when we're doing any kind of identification. You can use it uh, with fingerprints, you could use it with shoe prints, you can use it when you're looking at documents, question documents, anything where you're looking at um, identification. It's really neat too because it lets you share it with the community and you can go out there and you can find um, all kinds of things that people have done uh, and shared with you, all kinds of lessons. So this is just one of the applications. Again, I've been teaching mostly online um, and I could certainly always with my webcam, you know, use this and record that and play it for my online class, but I think this would work really, really well uh, in a face-to-face -face class when I'm doing that. So that's just one of the things I wanted to show you. Um, taking screenshots, really, really easy. Um, holding the uh, home button and the um, um, sleep button, easy to take a screenshot of anything. Um, so that's a great teaching tool when you're in the classroom and you can do things like that. Um, as you can see, I have about 8,000 apps, <laughs> and I, I try to keep them all organized. That's just, that's just me. Um, using audio and video that are accessible to mobile devices, you have to be aware of the video format that you're using because you want as many people as possible to be able to access it. Um, there's an app called iPad Secrets. It's either free or it's 99 cents, but it's great. I mean, and it's just one page. Everything is one screen, and you just flip the page, and I learned so much about my iPad easy stuff just going through that. So I highly recommend that you get that. Like it's either free or it's 99, it's well worth it. Okay. Uh, and again, don't be afraid to try new things. A lot of people here have said that. I love technology, so I'm always trying new things.